Thank you. Great, great saying. Amen. Romans 16, and uh, this weather causes our sound system to do weird stuff. See, I'm more weird than it is, so I know how to figure it out. <laughs> right, Lisa? Yeah. Weird just means different, right? That's all. Very different. <laughs> but, uh, so this is our church anniversary day, 64 years, and December 15th, 1958. You know, if we don't uh, remember these things, guess what you do? You forget these things. That's why the people that want our government changed completely from the way the nation started. We are always fighting to keep our history true, are we not? There's no other nation on earth started like our nation, nor has it ever been a nation so prosperous and powerful and maintained freedom instead of making its citizens slaves of the state. Now, Romans 16, verse 16, we're going to see here the negative sevenfold creed of independent fundamental Baptist churches. What? This is an independent fundamental Baptist church. It was started that way. Well, it started the same way Jesus started his churches. And we'll see that. But we'll see uh, some negative things here, some positive things here. Now this is a negative warning we're going to see in Romans 16, 16. It's a negative warning for a positive result. And all good laws work this way. The laws tell you, don't do that. It'll be good for you. Do we not? Stop sign, is it bad or good? Is it negative or positive? Well, it's a positive result, but it tells you don't do something. Yeah. And yield signs and stop signs and speed limit signs and the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not, thou shalt, thou shalt not, thou shalt. So it says here, let's stand and read Romans 16, 16. And he's talking about churches, plural. These are independent, scripturally baptized churches. We don't have thousands and thousands of millions of churches on earth at this writing. We just have the few that came from the original church of Jesus Christ. 16, 16 Romans says, salute one another with what? Yes. Now don't be trying that here. <laughs> I try to look up the history of that and I'll tell you, uh, we'll just, uh, this is a salute for you military guys, right? And uh, from our heart, you could throw a kiss, that'd be just say thank. Hold your hand over your heart, touch your lips, and then you go like that. That's, and then, then you're COVID safe too. So. <laughs> thank you, what's going on? Salute one another with a holy kiss. The blank what? The churches, not the church, not church universal. This is, that's a modern invention. The churches of Christ, each one independent of each other, cooperating with one another, Churches of Christ salute you. Then he says, now I beg you or beseech you, brethren. Negative, here it comes. Mark them which what? Cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. This thing is really failing here. Avoid them for they are such which serve not our Lord Jesus Christ but their own belly. And by good words... Think of your radio, TV, book writers, computer speakers, well-known chart makers. And by how do, how do people corrupt the Word of God? Here it tells you, by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple, of the unlearned. A lot of folks don't read their Bible, but they will listen to the radio broadcast. They take it as the Bible, but it's really the Word of man not really the word of God. And they're simple. They're simpletons. You ever heard that? They're not ignorant. They're stupid. Because they know what they ought to do. Ignorance is you don't know what to do. If 
you know what to do, you don't do it. That's just stupid, okay? He's got a bad case of stupid across America. So he gives them a negative thing here. I beg you, mark them, which cause divisions. Watch out for them. Watch them. They'll change everything. And offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them, for they are of such. Serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, means they're conceited people, and by good words and fair speeches, sounds like your modern Bibles, doesn't it? And good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. So, Lord, we ask you now to guide us into the scriptures. Seven major things that we hold to that Jesus taught. So we ask you now to bless us. May we grow in the Lord through the word of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Be seated. So we have negative uh, warning here for a positive result so that we keep the doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, in the churches pure. Now, we call these the, I, I named these many years ago, the negative sevenfold creed of independent fundamental baptist churches which are the original churches as we'll see so everything we'll see here starts with no 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 don't you hate that no mommy cannot no daddy can't no sergeant cannot no how many like that it's like a hammer in the head isn't it and uh but you might ask the reason why no and usually your parents had a good reason to tell you no and, you, and, and your boss had a good reason to tell you no. But no is a negative, uh, it is a negative word but can have positive results. First we see in our churches, we have no hope but grace. Amen? No hope but grace. Turn to Ephesians 2.8 or you know the verse. But in Ephesians 2.8 tells us that we have no hope in this life but the grace of God. So we see the negative but we also see the positive here. For by grace 2.8 says in Ephesians you know the verse, it should be one of your first memory verses if you're saved. For by grace are you saved through faith that not of yourselves it is the gift of God not of works lest any man should boast. Are you keeping yourself saved? Are you keeping yourself saved? Are you keeping yourself saved? If you, if you mildly say yes, you're boasting. You're stealing the grace of God. You're stealing the, the faith once delivered to the saints. It's theft, not of works listening. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, to do good works, after we're saved. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Quickly look at 1 Thessalonians. Hang a right a couple pages. 1 Thessalonians tells us no, we have no hope but, but grace. 5, 5th uh, chapter, verse 8 to 10. And we see here, I believe it is. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 8 to 10. But let us who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the holes. In other words, I said no hope. These verses contain the word hope, all right? So it says, we put on, the, we that are saved here, verse 8, we are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the helmet we're wearing is what? The hope of salvation. Well, I hope I get there. It's not that kind of hope. It said, you are saved, you're waiting, the hope is, the, the, the blessed hope. For God hath not appointed us unto wrath here, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, not by our own works, but by him, by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. So we have this no hope but grace through Christ. Lastly, look at 2 Thessalonians to your right, uh, chapter 2, verse 16. Tells us more about this, this hope that we have. Uh, when y'all leave, I'm going to throw the sound system out the door. When we have fluctuating temperatures, condensation builds up in these things. 2.16 tells us about 
our hope. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God even our Father which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and what else? Good hope through how? Through grace. So we have no hope but grace. So that's the first part of our sevenfold creed of independent Baptist churches. Secondly, turn to John 14, 1, and we see, secondly, we have no home but heaven. It's not that we don't have, we have no hope but grace, but we have no home but heaven. Uh, are you going to heaven? Yes, sir. Who told you so? The Bible. How do I know the Bible tells me so? Dale Evans wrote that song, by the way. But it says here, let not your heart be troubled, John 14, 1. We have no hope but grace and no home but heaven. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Amen. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. And so he goes on and talks about he's the way, the truth, and the life. Now, secondly, but lastly here, go to 1 Peter, because we have no hope but grace and no home but heaven. So we see 1 Peter chapter 1. is a great, great set of verses on eternal salvation and that we can know we have a home in heaven. It says here, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us, means saved us, again unto a lively or living hope, lively hope, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance. So we're saved, and here's what we get. This is the package of salvation to an inheritance incorruptible can handle it folks to an inheritance incorruptible undefiled and that what fadeth not away what else reserved. it's reserved in heaven for you so how do you change that how do you change that you don't why first five because you or who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you're in heaviness through manifold temptations. He talks about living through our trials, but your salvation is not going anywhere if you're really born again. We have no hope but grace. We have no home but heaven. If you're saved, that's that's it's a done deal. Then we have thirdly, look at Ephesians chapter one, three out of seven things here. So we have no hope, no home, but grace in heaven. We have no head but Christ. We have no head but, but Jesus Christ. Ephesians one and verse nineteen to the uh, 23rd chapter verse excuse me and so he says here in Ephesians now this book is not written to Christians all over the earth because there's not any Christians all over the earth at this writing it's to the Ephesian church it's to the Corinthian church it's to the Galatian church he, he starts off his books writing to the church of Corinth to the church of Ephesus and so we have here and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe According to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought, worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead, set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, when he wants as far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet, his meaning Christ, put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head uh, over all things to the what? To the church. 
and we call them the churches, plural, which is his body. We are his arms, legs, feet, hands, ears, eyes, and tongue. Are we not? We are an operating body, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Read 22 with me again. And hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. So we have no hope but what? Grace. We have no home but what? Heaven. We have no head but Christ. Negative turned into a positive. Number four. This gets a little interesting. If you have a seat belt, you might want to buckle it up right now. No headquarters but the local visible church. No headquarters. Turn to Matthew 16, 15. Matthew 16 and verse 15. And this is where Jesus, we see the beginnings here. He has his disciples. This church is here because of Jesus started the first church. It's his, this is his church. This is not my church or your church. This is his church. This is his body, his, his believers here. So he says to Peter, <clears throat> Matthew 16, 15, Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, he's not building this, the Catholics start their church here, that Peter was the first pope. That is a bunch of, how do you spell baloney? Is it still spelled the same way? Malarkey, do we ever had that? That's a real word, I was in Ireland and you saw the Roman sign, malarkey, yeah. So we see he's talking about the statement that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, is what he's referring to. I say unto thee that thou art Peter, yes, you are the stone, the little stone, and upon this rock, he's talking about the statement there, thou art the son of God. I will build my church, local visible assembly. Ecclesia always means a visible assembly of some sort for some particular reason. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then uh, he charged, charged he his disciples that they should Tell no man that he was Jesus of Christ. He wanted, he just went out. People knew he was the Christ. I mean, how many people heal everybody in town? Feed 5,000 with nothing. I, I mean, he, he didn't want him to brag on him. The people, you know, when you got saved, you didn't have to have anybody talk you into it. You didn't have to hear, you knew there's only one way out. You were convicted of your sin against God, and I was too. And we came to the Lord. He didn't need any advertising, a big billboard. Today we have all kinds of advertising. Jesus is coming, and we, we, we spend millions and billions of dollars to advertise and pump him up like some uh, uh, famous evangelist or something. That's not what he did. He fulfilled the gospel of the Old Testament, Isaiah. He's called the servant, and would he be like how he would act before he, when he got here. So we have no headquarters but the local visible church. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now we had 2,000 years since this was written, a little over 2,000, and now we have churches. Uh, yeah, we got millions of churches worldwide. But guess what? The local church is the headquarters of the gospel. We are the headquarters. Churches have been taught to join something bigger than themselves. They're called denominations. I was doing some research, and this is uh, the Southern Baptist Convention boasts of 50,000 churches. 
But guess what? The Southern Baptist Convention is headquartered in Nashville. And guess what? They're not a church. They were started by preachers, not congregational members. Same thing with BBFI over here. That started in 1950 by a group of preachers and no church members. The assembly, the same way, headquartered here. The uh, Methodists are headquartered, and I don't like the name Meth anyway, you know. So I don't think I'd join that church. And uh, they're in Nashville, Tennessee. They're our headquarters. Episcopal Church is headquartered in New York City. Catholics are headquartered in the, in the nation of the Vatican, which is in Rome, Italy. It is a nation all its own. And so that is their headquarters. The Mormons are headquartered in Salt Lake City, Utah. The Jehovah's Witnesses are headquartered. They're, none of them are churches. They're organizations with the name of Christ attached to them. None of them have church members. They, they, they need church members and they need the money of the church members, but they don't produce. They, they take in, but they don't produce. You, every local church is self-supporting. It supports itself. It does the gospel ministry. It doesn't need some higher power to be part of. See, if our, our church goes out of business, praise the Lord, there's another one just down the road. And if that one goes out, the devil can't snuff them all out. But if you put them all under one umbrella and call them the church, universal, then guess what? The devil can ruin everything just about at one time by changing the doctrines. And so we have the Lutherans are in Chicago, Illinois. And on and on and on it goes, and your bulletin has a printout of the history of Protestant churches that started after 1500. Our churches, our Baptist churches, started with the gospel of Jesus Christ, as you will see. So we have no headquarters but the local visible church. You might say Jesus started the franchise System. Let's call it a system. Because which Kentucky Fried Chicken is the most important one? Well, according to Kentucky Fried Chicken, all of them. Uh, how many, which is the best, what is the most uh, favorite powerful McDonald's in the world? Well, we just, we'll fail if that one goes out of business. They all are. Which church is better than the next church? We all have the same gospel. We're all the same. We just have different ways of operating internally, numbers and so forth. But our headquarters is the local church on this earth for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not a parachurch organization. And so some of the Christian organizations that are charities, and I won't name the name because it's upsetting to me, the person at the head of the Christian charity makes almost a million dollars a year salary, 750,000, 700, yeah, 750,000 dollars a year for a, a charity, Christian charity. It's not a church though, it's a charity. So I tell people, if you want to come to church, come to church, but if you want to come to a charity, you need to go downtown somewhere. We do charitable things, but we are not a charity. We are a headquarters of the gospel of Jesus Christ for salvation. Amen. Number five out of seven. Let's move on. I can see uh, that went over well with a couple of you. But I ain't, it's in the Bible. It's the way it started. It's the way it ought to be. The primitive gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we have number five. So no hope but grace, no home but heaven, no head but Christ, no headquarters but the local visible church. And no help but the Holy Spirit. Turn to Zechariah 4, 6. A famous verse there we love. In Zechariah 4, verse 6, no help but the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm glad. You know, if he wasn't living with them, we'd never really know we were saved, would we? He bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God. But Zechariah... God reminds this king, and it says here in 4, 6, Zechariah 4, verse 6, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, 
This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, who's a, a king. And he says, tell him this for me, Zechariah. Read it with me. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth. And he goes and talks about the king and that has the power of God upon his life. Uh, in other words, do not try to do God's work man's way. John 14, as we get close to the end here, in John chapter 14, Jesus tells us about the Holy Spirit. And if you got saved, you've got all you're going to get, the fullness of the Spirit. That's why he was so happy when you got saved. He went from being under conviction, going to hell, to this absolute ecstatic freedom of I'm, I'm not going to hell. I'm, I've got a future. I've got a, I've got a purpose now. I have a cause to live for. That was because of the Spirit of God. John 14 and verse 16. And I will pray the Father, Jesus says, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you temporarily. And what does it say? That he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and where? Shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. That is through the spirit of the Holy, Holy Ghost. Now 16 verse 13, he repeats this. John 16, 13. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, is what he wants to do for us, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. And I might bring that up. That's all we ever hear about now is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. He doesn't brag on himself. Jesus is to get all the glory. It says here, when he comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. So when we read the Bible, the Spirit of God illuminates. He, he reveals to us. He teaches us all truth. If you're out of your Bible, guess what? You're on your own, aren't you? We need to be in the Word. Whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show, show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he, the Spirit, he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. Aren't you glad the Spirit of God tries to guide us and teach us? We've got to slow down, though, so we can hear his voice, feel his presence, and obey. It's amazing. Sometimes something just pops into my head, and I say, I better do that. There's, there's a reason it popped into my head. Because I don't really have popcorn thoughts all the time. But sometimes, I just then I find out it was a perfect timing. The, the Spirit of God had prompted me to call somebody the other day, and it, it was an important call for them. It was just, I feel like I need to do this. Ever have that ever happened to you? Amen. You know, coincidentally, by the way, but it was the Spirit of God when you find out, oh, my, that person was close to killing themselves. That person was close to running their home. So we have no hope but the Holy Spirit. Number six out of seven. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians 12. <clears throat> so six out of these seven parts of the creed here we call it. What we really, all these churches believed back in the beginning. We have no help but the Holy Spirit, but we have no helpers but local church members. The 12th chapter is about, mostly about the human body and the members of the human body. Chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians, verse 12 to 31, is all about 
comparing the human body to the church body of believers and the church member bodies to human part bodies like arms, legs, and so forth. So we won't read verse 12 to 16, but we have uh, verse 17 we'll pick up there. So he says, if the whole body were an eye, wouldn't that be weird? <laughs> when I was a kid, they had a horror show in black and white in the 50s called The, the Crawling Eye. Did you ever see that? They still show it once in a while. It doesn't scare me anymore. But when I was at the movie house for 10 cents on that Saturday, Oh, it's the worst thing in the world, the crawling eye. If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? Where the ear? If the whole thing were hearing, uh, where were the smelling? So now he goes into the body parts, how important each part is. Aren't you glad you have a big toe and a thumb and an ear? Aren't you glad they all work together? So he's trying to show that members are necessary in churches. So he says here in verse 18, he shifts to the members of the Corinthian church. But now, so we have no helpers but local church members. But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. Why do you come to Grace Bible Baptist Church? Well, I don't know, just as, uh, as close to my house or uh, I like it. I like this is so and so or it says here the Holy Spirit's to lead us to be members of a local church body. Have you ever searched for a church in prayer when you move to a town or something? Yeah. And you said, God, I need to know where I can serve the Lord through my local church. Where am I needed, Lord? So he says, if they were all one member, where were the body? So you have to have body parts in churches. But now are they many members yet but one body? So every person is necessary in a local church. Who's the most important person in a family? Mom or dad or the kids? They're all necessary or it wouldn't be a family. That's what he's showing, the, the assembly, the visible assembly. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of thee. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble, they are necessary. Even people you don't like are needed in the membership of a local independent Baptist church. We need to come down to minister to them and they need to grow up so they can minister to others, right? We all help each other. So they're necessary. Now the word members from verse 12 to uh, verse, in 20 verses here, the word members is used 12 times. Okay, so he, he's, he's trying to get us to think member, 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 member. I was uh, thinking uh, that the Bible never refers to visitors or attendees, or spectators, or fans of a church. It only refers to members of a local, independent, baptized believer church. Sort of different today, isn't it? People are non-obligated to local churches and to taking part of that church as a member of that church. Oh, they got many reasons, but not one of them is a biblical reason. Maybe an opinionated reason, or I got hurt at this church, so I'll never do that again. And, but we see here the word members is the subject of what we're seeing here. We have no helpers in local churches but church members. You have volunteers and you have people that want to do their thing in the church, but they are not obligated to anybody else in that church. They're on their own. They're just freelancers. And they go from problem to problem and trouble to trouble because they're living outside what the Bible teaches that church members need to do. So we have here, as we keep on reading, and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. We see their need, we try to meet that, bring them up. And their unfitting or uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. 
So the, I, I know what a mess I was when I got saved at 27. And I, and I had some older Christians kind of took me under wing to, to show me uh, a mature life than what I was trying to do my own thing as a young Christian. It, it, it didn't work. So our fitting parts or comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. So we bring folks up that need help. That there should be no schism or division here in the body, but that the members, here we go, the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are, Corinthian church, verse 1 tells you this is written to the church at Corinth. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondary prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles and gifts of healings, and it goes on and on and on. So we have no help but local church members. And so Christians that are outside of a church membership are not doing well at all. Supposing the gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself, Paul warned Timothy. So they, they, they smile and they guess they can't line up with the scriptures. And so we should not give them help to live a life outside of the Bible. We think we're doing them a favor by if I show favorites, they'll, maybe they want to join our church. Now, we're not in a membership drive, folks. Right. We're trying to reach the world for Christ, and those kind of people will just get in the way unless they join with us to help us in what we're doing, or they need to join a church and help that church do what they're doing for Christ. How many know you want to lift an anchor if you want your boat to move? Sometimes you have people that get in the church and they're an anchor they dig in you can't get them out they won't go forward for christ they just they're just having their way in a local church you former pastors know exactly what i'm talking about lastly i see you're frowning so let's go to thirdly uh, i mean seventh here we got to say no hope but what grace no home but heaven no head but christ no headquarters but the local church no help but the Holy Spirit, no helpers but our local church members. And then we see number seven. If you turn to John 16, we have no help, we have no happiness. We don't have any happiness. But what? The joy of the Lord. We don't want to be happy. We want to be filled with joy. Happiness depends on happenings. Get on a roller coaster. I'm happy. Get off of it. I'm unhappy. You don't want happiness. You want the joy of the Lord. Jesus tells us in John 16 uh, here as we get ready to go. <clears throat> Look at verse 22 to 24. So Christ is talking here about our joy. It says, a little while and you shall not see me. He's going to ascend to heaven. And then again, a little while you shall see me. And he came back, remember, for the first resurrected service two times. In a little while you shall see me because I go to the Father. And then we go, oh, that's 16, 16. Uh, let's go to 16, 22. Pardon me. So he says, and ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again. Your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. That's what the devil tried to do, bring people into our lives to steal our joy. Forget that we're saved and going to live forever, that we're supernatural beings. So I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. And in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, now when you get to heaven, you, you won't need anything. You won't have a prayer list when you go to heaven. You won't be asking God for anything. You'll have it all. You'll just be rejoicing. And, and even the thousand year reign of Christ, we'll be busy serving the Lord. 
So he says, in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask, the Father of my name, he what? He will give it you. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive. Why? That your joy may be full. Isn't there a song about that? This verse. Ask, he says here, you shall receive that your joy may be full. How's it go? This is my commandment, that ye love one another, that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another, that your joy may be full. That your joy may be full. That your joy may be full. Do you know the song? <clears throat> What's wrong with you people? <laughs> Y'all never leave Missouri? This is my commandment, that ye love one another, that your joy may be full. I know you know this one. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart, run in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. Now, one mother, she didn't like this verse I taught her kids back yonder. And if the devil doesn't like it, he can sit on attack. Set on attack. Set on attack. And if the devil doesn't like it, he can set on attack. Set on attack today. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart, down in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. Turn it out, Nehemiah, last verse. And we're out of here. So while you turn to Nehemiah, we see here in chapter 8, they're discouraged, the wall's broken down, and uh, they don't know what to do. So Nehemiah has to come, and he has to encourage them, and this is what he teaches them. Nehemiah chapter 8, <clears throat> verse 10. He tells the people, and we ought to do this when we leave here, the same thing he told them, and they built the wall. 8.10 of Nehemiah said, Then he said unto them, Go your way, comma, eat the fat. Don't suppose they meant on that. <laughs> eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions of those things unto them for whom nothing is prepared. In other words, share what you got. For this day is holy unto the Lord, neither be ye sorry. Read this. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites, these priest, priestly people here, stilled all the people saying, Hold your peace, for the day is holy, neither be ye what? Grieved. We don't need to leave, live a sor sorrowful, grieving life. If anybody should be happy, I should say joyful, it ought to be us. Amen. Amen. So he says, be, be not sorry, neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And I know you that, know that song. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The Lord of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. He gives me living water, and I thirst no more. He gives me living water, and I thirst no more. He gives me living water, and I thirst no more. For the joy of the Lord is my strength. So we have no hope but what? You're not taking notes, right? But grace, no home but, no head but, no headquarters but, the local church, no help but, 
Holy Spirit, no helpers, but church members. No happiness, but what else? The joy of the Lord is our strength. Basic questions I wrote a little while ago. Are you an active member of such a church as this? I think so. I didn't say answer. Yeah. Are you an active member of a, such a church as this? And also, who is your pastor? What and where is that church located? It's millions of Christians can't answer either, either one of those questions. They've been taught that the church is somewhere, everywhere, nowhere. <coughs> It's caught up in denominations and watering down the word of God and just a hodgepodge of lost people. Fake Christians, we would say. Some of them don't even know they're lost. They have no conviction of the Holy Spirit. Dear Lord, we thank you for the 64 years that this church started way back out in the gas station where the preacher couldn't read nor write. Got a rough start. It's done so much that you've by the Spirit of God and by the church members have done so much in this community and around the world. So we pray now for the next uh, few years coming up that the church would move forward and the people would be serious about serving you through the local church of Jesus Christ. He said, I will build my church. And then there was churches started by that church. We started other churches and here we are today, 2,100 years later. So we thank you for the Bible we have. Help us to read it and let the Spirit of God open it up to us. And may souls be saved because of what we do now in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand and turn to page number 298. 298. 298. If you have a need. Happy birthday, local church. We eat at 5 o'clock tonight for our celebratory meeting next door. Jesus is tenderly calling me home, calling today, calling today. I hope you search for the power of the world, order and father away. Calling today, calling today. Thank you for saving my soul. Amen. Yeah.